Hi, the next stage for our project now is to work with our final illustration which we've taken through Photoshop and saved our final PSD file. So now we have to open up an Illustrator, so I'm just going to launch that program and we're going to open up a new file and we're going to use an A4 document which is fine and we're just going to check that it's portrait rather than landscape to suit the particular illustration we're working with, so I'll OK that. Once we have our blank page open, we could either drag our file directly onto the desktop or from the desktop onto the Illustrator file if we want to, or we can choose Place. And as I said earlier, we're using the PSD file for this, which was the one we cleaned up at the last stage of the video. When we uh, created that PSD file, it was actually built on a translucent layer. So basically it comes in with a translucent background, which is quite useful for this kind of work and just means we don't have to worry about uh, filling in or removing color around the outer edge of the, the image if it came in with a white background. The first stage of actually tracing our image is just to use the image trace panel, which um, is up at the top here, and we'll click on the button and it'll trace our file. Once it does that, you then need to actually go in a little bit closer and just see, and you'll see that we're not looking at a pixelated uh, image anymore. We now have a proper Illustrator file. The thing we do have to do now is actually make some adjustments. So we have the Image Trace Options panel, which you can find under Windows and Image Trace. And within that, normally the default for a line drawing like this is to scan in your illustration and use the sketch art option and basically this gives us a good reproduction and you can see it filled in a little bit more detail from the original drawing. Sometimes with drawings like these ones where you have quite light detail is that you might bring in an initial image and if I bring down the threshold setting you'll see it lightens up and we're losing details. What I'm going to do is increase the threshold up the way just to make a stronger image and basically it'll just beef it up and basically that'll just give our bolder file to work with for when we're actually colouring in our file. Once we're happy with the quality of the image from that, we can then click off. And to finalise this, we'll click on the image and then click Expand. And when we do that, the program will finish the tracing option and we end up with a proper Illustrator file. At this stage, we can then go in with the white arrow tool and make some adjustments if you want to add or remove elements of the, the scan. But we're actually going to continue on to the colouring up stage. So we're now going to go to Object and use Live Paint. And we need to obviously select the object with our black arrow. And then go to Object, Live Paint, and Make. Nothing obviously happens to that part, but uh, what we have to do is then deselect it. Go to our menu bar and look for the Live Paint tool, which is normally about halfway down on our left option here. Normally you'll see Shape Builder tool as being the default one there, but underneath you'll find Live Paint Bucket. Once you have that turned on, when you move back across your image, because we have the Live Paint process turned on, anywhere we move the cursor around, we can actually now select that area. And basically the three little icons, which are above your tool, tool icon, are basically reflecting the colors which are in your swatches panel. And basically the color to the left or right of that is basically the colors which are on the swatches here. Now I can use the left or right arrow to move forward or backwards through the swatches just to save me some time when I'm creating an illustration. Or I can also move up or down and it moves up or down through the different groupings of colors. So for this one, I'm going to start to colour in my character here. So I'm going to start with maybe a green shirt. So I'll choose green from the options. And I'll start to click my way around the illustration and just fill in the areas that we have here. Which is fine for now. I'll give him some yellow hair. Just to make him blonde. And then for his skin colour, Currently in the default set of swatches here, I don't have a suitable color for skin, so the pink which is already in there is a bit too neon. So what I'm going to do is double click on the swatch icon here on the toolbar, bring it down to a pink color and just create a new pink which is a little bit lighter, opacity, which will be more suited to what we're using here. OK that. And then what I'll do is I'll drag that swatch onto my swatches panel and just add it to the set. Then once I have that, I can then click on my character and just add in the colour. 
And again, I'll have to move in and out of the image just to get as close in to actually fill the necessary areas which I need for the illustration. So I'll just fill in some of these fingertips. Like so. Then the next stage, I'll add some trouser color for the guy. I'll just add that in. And then we'll move on to the next stage. So if we want to add in a background color, probably the easiest thing to do is actually create a new background behind this one. So I'm going to open up my layers panel. And I'm going to create a new layer. And OK that. I'll pull layer 2 down below layer 1 and then lock off layer 1, which has our illustration on it. And basically now I'm going to work on layer number 2. So I'll create a new background color for this file. And we'll drag a box across there. And you can see it fills with the default color in the swatches, so I'll make that maybe orange or maybe actually gray just to give us a less um, effective color here. And basically, what we should find is that we're actually seeing the gray through the different areas of the image because obviously these ones haven't been filled in at this point. So we'll go back into our layers panel. I'm now going to lock layer number two so I don't pick up the background and unlock layer one. And I'll go back in with the um, light paint tool and basically add in some extra color to this just to fill out the remaining areas. So we'll convert our little music player here, add in some color for the cable and the headphones. And maybe also a shirt. And basically, we can easily see how quickly we can actually fill in this image. And basically, the final result hopefully gives you a reasonably good image, which has started out as a pencil sketch, but now we've created a fully digital file, an Illustrator file, which can be scaled up to any scale you want and give you a good reproduction of your final image. Thank you.